everyone. Hope you are good and be happy always. In our previous video, we have discussed the definition of manager economics, nature and the fundamental aspects of manager economics. And in this video, we will discuss the scope of manager economics. Anyway, what is scope? Scope is the content or the subject area of the study of any particular subject. And as far as scope of manager economics is concerned, it is just the application part, whatever a businessman does to maintain his business by making decisions and forward planning etc so basically if you don't remember anything just focus on this point that whatever a businessman is doing or have to do for man managing his business properly and earning profit is the scope of manager economics first of all take the screenshot of this board okay done now for understanding the scope of manager economics we have framed a code for you people comprising of the first alphabets initial alphabets of all these uh, terms right so D for demand analysis and forecasting number one point C for cost analysis P for your production analysis then again P for pricing decisions policies and practice and then P for profit max management and C for your capital management so all these are the components of your business management right whatever has to be done to manage any firm and gain maximum profit and manage your business uh, comprises the scope of manager economics so Let's start and discuss them one by one. Now, number one, demand analysis and forecasting. This is the first and foremost duty of any manager or owner to manage his business by demand analysis. How? How can a demand be analyzed? See, whatever business you are doing, you just need to know the existing demand and the future demand for a product, whatever you are producing, uh, uh, commodity you are producing. Okay, so you just have to estimate your demand. Demand estimation, future demand estimation through various statistical tools, through various softwares and methods and calculations, you have to estimate your future demand also. Then only you will be able to survive in the market and gain excellence in the market and expand your business and increase your sales and earn revenues that can give you maximum profit. So demand forecasting is very important. Then demand manipulation. Once you have forecasted your demand or estimated your demand you can manipulate your demand increase your demand how you can just go in for product differentiation you can make your product more uh, attractive you can go for advertisement of your product you can uh, just hire a good brand ambassador or anything like that you can do to increase your demand so demand manipulation is also studied over here then discovering the forces determining sales there are certain forces that determine your sales maybe your festivals maybe there are special events maybe there that determine your sales your sales will be high or low so just you need to get a, a glimpse of that you get, need to get a understanding of that and so that you can increase your demand in future and existing demand also so all these components are studied in demand analysis and forecasting okay then next is cost analysis See, every production, whatever is done in your business, involves certain cost. Nothing can be done without finances or investing something. So, cost is there. So, you have to understand different types of costs. So, manager economics studies different types of costs like fixed cost. Fixed cost is a cost that you invest or the money you invest in the purchase of your machines, building your plant and other assets which are fixed maybe for 10 to 20 years until and unless you try to expand your uh, business or your firms increase your production capacity so up to a certain limit of uh, production your investment for fixed production remains same right the fixed investment is the investment that is done in plant and machinery and that is fixed once you do it you will not be required to do it for everyday purposes like it is not like raw material you will have to purchase every day just like you don't purchase machinery every day just like if you have a laundry you won't have to purchase washing machine every day. You can purchase it once and use it for 5 to 10 years to wash clothes and carry on your with your laundry business. Then, variable cost. Variable cost is the cost of raw material and other day-to-day um, -day expenses which you have to carry on to maintain your business. So, variable cost varies with the level of production. Take for example, if you have a bakery, you are manufacturing breads and biscuits. If on any particular day, you have to manufacture only 10 packets of bread for that you will buy only or you will use only the uh, white flour and other chemicals sugars and butter etc only if you manufacture 10 packets of bread and in any other case if you have to manufacture 100 or 1000 packets of bread then your variable cost will increase that means 
वेरिएबल कॉस्ट इंक्रीजेस विद इंक्रीज इन प्रोडक्शन कैपेसिटी और इंक्रीज इन आउटपुट ओके देन टोटल कॉस्ट द समेशन ऑफ बोथ द फिक्स कॉस्ट एंड वेरिएबल कॉस्ट इज द टोटल कॉस्ट एंड यू ऑलवेज हैव टू कीप एन एक्टिव आई एक्टिव टेक अ टिप पल्स ऑन योर टोटल कॉस्ट जस्ट टू मेंटेन योर बिजनेस सो दैट योर टोटल कॉस्ट डज नॉट आउटरन योर प्रॉफिट्स और योर बजट ओके रेलेवेंट कॉस्ट many times you purchase something at a very high rate and that is not relevant at all so you have to take a note of cost whatever existing cost are there in the market and you have to purchase the things at relevant cost then this concept is also studied then cost output relationship see this is very important thing to understand why because if your costs are high then your profits will be low there is just inverse relationship between your cost and profits why because if you are purchasing or manufacturing something producing something at a very high cost then you won't be able to earn good profits because you won't be able to get revenues up to that tune so what you need to do to gain maximum profit you have to keep your cost at the lowest possible le level and increase the revenues at the highest possible level and the difference between your cost and revenue is your profit margin take for example if you purchase potatoes at rupees 10 per kg rupees 10 per kg and then you sell them at rupees 50 per kg what is your profit margin rupees 40 per kg so this is the example that you can see over here that's cost output relationship that means you have sold the potatoes at just 40 rupees higher level then production analysis whenever you do your production you have to see many of the things that creep into your production that is level and nature of technology if we have very good technology if you have access to very good technology you can just manufacture larger amounts of output with very um, little time and little cost and if you don't have them then you'll have to wait long to manufacture that amount then production function production function also depends on many of the things and you have to study them just how much you can produce with the level of technology and with the level of raw material and capital and labor you have that economies and diseconomies of scale see these are very important see when you operate at very low capacity suppose you have a very small farm then you don't have that much bargaining power i have a small bakery so i have to purchase raw materials at higher price because i am not a big businessman no one will listen in the market and i have to purchase all the raw material and the labor will also be available to me at higher cost but if i am a very big businessman i have better bargaining power i can purchase all the raw materials at a very low cost and that's why i can produce things at a very low cost so in that manner i am experiencing economies of scale that means if i am operating at a higher scale or if i am having a very big plant and business i am having better bargaining power and i am getting maximum profits then pricing decisions and policies and practices pricing decisions they are very important you need to see uh, potential rivals in the market that means competition you are facing competition from certain firms then you need to see them you need to see various elasticities of demand as we have studied things which are inelastic inelastic means things which you have to consume like just like medicines just like your eatables just like your tea coffee salt etc they, they uh, these demands are inelastic for consumers so you can increase the price of these products but in another case if the things are not essentials if they can be dispensed off if they are not essential to be used then you cannot increase their prices then pricing methods for that various elasticities we have uploaded a video in your microeconomics you can go over and see that uh, various elasticities of demand are given there okay then pricing methods there are different pricing methods take for example you have differential pricing method if you have books the addition of books special addition of books costs you higher just like a special edition of arundhati roy book special edition of some big writer just like jk rowling etc is like uh, leather bound copies are sold at very high or very uh, matlab expensive rates are uh, exhib exhibited over there but if that particular edition is given at spiral bound or hard bound or paper bound that is available at much cheaper or lesser rates so this is differential pricing that means charging different prices for different types of consumers if consumer is is uh, belonging to a very high class elite elite class that they can give you better prices they can purchase the things at higher prices and if they belong to lower class or lower earning group then they will give you lesser prices or lesser amount of profit then price forecasting 
Take for example, if any economy is operating under depression, then in future prices may be lower than what are they today, right time, existing prices. So you need to keep a pulse over future prices and existing prices also and they need to be forecasted as well. What will be the price after six months for any particular commodity? You can see it. But if in any case, if demand for any commodity is falling, Take for example, demand for any commodity is falling, then its price will also fall. And if demand for any commodity is increasing in uh, some cases, then the prices can also increase. So price forecasting can work in that manner. Then profit management. See, if you are doing business, you are earning profit also. But if you are not managing it properly, then your business is destined to do. Okay, so you'll be uh, incurring losses in future if you don't manage your profits nicely and you won't be able to manage your business nicely. So in that case, management economist or the manager has to see, <coughs> sorry, that whatever he is earning, he has to manage its profit and just plow in his profits again into his business to gain maximum profits in future also and expand his business and revenue as well. So profit maximization, the basic motive of any business is profit maximization and they have to maximize their profit by different methods. Second says revenue maximization. To maximize your profit, you have to maximize your sales revenue. I have just explained the difference between the cost and revenue has to be very high to gain maximum profit. So the higher the difference between your cost and revenue, higher will be your profit. Okay, then break even analysis. Break even. This is very important. This is the point where you cover all your costs. That's like total cost. That is a summation of your fixed cost and variable cost. Here you're covering fixed cost, variable cost, and total cost, everything you're covering, and that eventually in your business you have started earning profit. Pure profits, okay? Net profits are being earned by you. That is your break-even point. Take for example, I have a bakery. I have operated that bakery for uh, one year. I have purchased machinery worth rupees 10 lakh rupees. I have invested 10 lakh rupees in that in machinery and plant and raw material as well. And now after one year. I am able to cover all my cost of one, uh, 10 lakh rupees plus the cost of all the raw material and finally I am able to earn some profit and that point where I am able to cover all my cost total that is fixed cost and variable cost I will be at break even point and this is known as break even analysis we can also study that in detail later on okay profit elasticity calculations just like price elasticity we have profit elasticities that for some commodities your profit will be higher that will be elastic and some for for some commodities your profit cannot increase or decrease that means it is inelastic in that case you can study profit uh, uh, elasticity calculations in your management economics then last capital management whenever you start a new business you need some capital for that it's not only plant and machine you need finances from that and you may get the finances from your uh, kinship that's like your brother and sister your mother or maybe from your own savings maybe from your friends or maybe from banks which provide you finances at some minimal interest rates or maybe from through any government uh, policy or any planning so in that case whatever uh, cost uh, whatever uh, finances you have you just have to manage them properly so that you can gain maximum profit Cost of capital has to be kept in mind always. What is the cost of capital? Just like opportunity cost of capital has to be studied here. See, if I have 10 lakh rupees in my savings or if I'm taking 10 lakh rupees from my brother and I'm investing that in my business, but that 10 lakh rupees could have been used in some other business also or for savings also. Maybe I would have purchased your FD, that is fixed deposit, or I would have invested that in your mutual funds or in some other policy. So I would have gained some profit, but in my business, what am I getting? So that is cost of capital. Whatever opportunity cost is commanded by my capital, that is the cost of capital. And that has to be always kept in mind to make your business a success, right? The rate of return. What is the rate of return? See, whenever you invest something that like I have invested 10 lakh rupees. So what is the rate of return? That is, if within five years, I was able to get 10 lakh rupees on my that 10 lakh rupees. That means uh, the rate of return is okay. But if I'm unable to even cover uh, a profit of or uh, the revenue of 5 lakh rupees in those five years, then I don't have a good rate of return. So rate of return has to be studied for keeping your business afloat and making it a success. 
So in macro economics, all these concepts are studied, and you have to cover the uh, all these concepts, or just keep in mind whenever you don't remember the points or the code over here, you just have to keep in mind. The scope of macro economics is what a manager does to maintain and manage his business. That's all. Demand forecasting, cost management, profit management, your uh, pricing methods, your profit management, etc., are the things what a manager has to do in his day-to-day -day business operations. So that's about your scope of manager economics. Hopefully, you might have understood this topic. If any problem exists, or if there is any problem, you can just write to me in my comments box. I'll be more than happy to answer that. Thank you so much. Take care and God bless you.